Hello class, and welcome to another quick lesson with Professor Choi. Um, I decided that I'm going to be starting a sort of a quick series of uh, videos that are at least 10 minutes or less that you guys can watch and then hopefully they can make your future better. So I'm going to be calling it Simple Steps for a Better Future and I'm going to try to make the videos 10 minutes or less. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about basic financial advice for young adults. Um, I did a survey, I teach economics and I teach statistics and uh, I do surveys in my classes all the time and about 90% of my students are under the age of 25. So that basically means that there is a lot of learning, especially financial learning, that needs to happen at this particular point in time unless you had a father or mother or a family member who was already a banker or, um, you know, I don't know, maybe you, uh, you weren't both a son, in which case then you probably don't need much advice. Alright, so in any case, uh, if you're like the rest of us, then you normally need some advice, either that or you're going to be making the mistakes on the go. So, um, let me give you some financial advice for young adults. First thing that you need to be doing if you're a young adult is you need to become money aware. Most young adults are usually living with their parents and they really have no idea how much money you need to spend on what. So they basically think, or you know, you, you, uh, you never really thought of, uh, how much money a mortgage costs or how much money a rent costs and you think that a job at the particular rate that you have right now, you know, making minimum wage is enough and you're going to be okay and you're happy. I need you to understand that this is not the truth and the only reason it even works is because your parents are paying the rest. So you need to become money aware very quickly. Um, the way you become money aware is by basically learning where your money goes. Like the amount of money that comes in, figure out how much that is, and the amount of money that goes out of your pocket, and figure out how much that is. And I don't mean like, you know, sitting down and quickly looking at it. I mean, if possible, just sit down and write it down. You know, make a comparison and become money aware of how much money is coming in and how much money is going out and on what. I can bet you money right now that if you're under the age of 25, more than 50% of your budget goes out on food. And if 50% of your money goes out on food, then you're not making enough money or you're eating too expensive. Alright? So you need to become money aware because you cannot go through your life spending 50% of your income on food. Alright, next thing that you need to do is you need to start having a budget. You need to budget yourself for everything because things that you want in the future, especially big ticket items, are not something that you can just buy without thinking about how much money you're spending. And if you do, you're going to find yourself in a lot of financial trouble fairly quickly, within three to five years or so, of you doing all these expenditures that you cannot afford. So you need to start having a budget. Now, how do you build a budget? Well, pretty easily. What you need to do is you need to basically start writing down pretty much how much money you spend and on what, especially on those recurrent payments. So, um, let's say for example you have a Netflix account. Well, you need to write it down as part of your budget. Let's say you have uh, expenditures on gasoline. This is something that you spend all the time. You need to write it down and have a budget for that. Let's say you have expenditures on food. You need to write it down. Alright? And you need to know how much money is going to each one of those items and you need to figure out how to fit that with the income that you have, okay? But there is no way to do it unless you basically sit down and you really write it down and you think about all this stuff so you can adjust these expenditures that you have on your budget. So in the meantime, you're becoming money aware. All right. The next thing you need to do is most young adults have a job. It could be part-time, it could be full-time, but you already have a job. Most employers today, especially big corporations, allow you to contribute money to their 401k. Having a retirement account when you're young is the best thing you could do to ensure a good financial future, especially when you retire or by the age of 60. Any money that you put in that account today, at the average rate that the market normally grows, will multiply by four. 
So if you put right now on that account $10, you're gonna pick up 40, about, um, you know, depending on how old you are. But if you're in your 20s, by the age of 60, you should have four times that amount of money in there. So therefore, the sooner you put money on your 401k or your retirement account, the better. Not only that, a lot of employers are normally trying to make um, all of their employees be part of their retirement account because they want to help you. And they normally match your contribution, which is basically the same thing as saying somebody's giving you free money for your future. So why don't you want to take that money? Okay? If you work for any employer right now and they allow you to contribute to your 401k, you need to be putting money in that 401k and you can thank me later. And by the way, I can send you my account, you know, and when you're 60, you can send me some money if this advice is going to make you money in the future. But the point is, if your employer, on top of the money that you're contributing, they're willing to give you money just for you putting money on your 401k, and then that money is going to quadruple by the age you're 60, why would you not want to do that? All right? The only thing you're putting out of pocket is why you're contributing it, then your employer is giving you free money and then you're taking compound interest and good investments inside your retirement account and you pick up a heck of a lot of money when you're 60. Now there is of course one catch on all retirement accounts. You can't touch it until the age of 59 and a half. And in many ways this is a good thing because most young people what they normally do since again they're used to doing this already is they take a lot of income in they put it on a savings account then right after that a big expense comes up and poof, retirement account is in, uh, the savings account is empty again so a retirement account is an excellent way for you to save for your future without having to worry about spending that money you just can't touch it because if you do you're going to lose a lot of the advantages of that retirement account especially tax advantages now again, the younger you are and the sooner you start the retirement account, the better. So please open a retirement account as soon as you can. All right. The fourth thing that you need to do is avoid getting into a lot of credit card debt. I know it's extremely easy to get a credit card and it's extremely easy to buy things with a credit card. But credit cards have the highest interest rates of any kind of debt you can have and therefore it is the worst type of debt to have. So you should not have too much credit card debt. The interest rate on this debt is absolutely ridiculous and you should not carry it. You need to figure out a way how to lower interest rates on your debts in order for you to be able to have a better financial future. Every time interest rates are too high, you're basically spending too much money for somebody else's money and it's coming out of your pocket and out of your future. Again, all of that money is money that you could have been putting on your retirement account and pick up a heck of a lot more money in the future, but you're spending it on that interest rate on that credit card and you should not have to do that. So please avoid getting into recurrent high interest rate debt when you're young. The last advice that I have for you is go to college. Pick up a lot of skills in college. If you don't want to go to school and get a career and get an associate's degree or maybe a bachelor's or a master's or a PhD because this is not for you, that's fine. Some people don't need to go to college. I went to college. I like it. I like to study. I'm a professor. I like to teach as well. But you need to be picking up whatever skills you think you need for your future. So I want you to understand that community colleges all over the nation are there to provide that service to anyone of any age. So if you're missing any skills or you think you need to know something, like maybe taking an economic class with me, then you should be taking advantage of this because community colleges are the cheapest way to pick up a lot of these skills that a lot of people need for their future, especially financial skills. So, Go to college and take classes. A lot of these classes are extremely worth your time because they will give you the skills that you need for the future. Finish school if you, sh if you can. The difference between a person that only does high school diploma versus a person with a bachelor's degree is almost half a million dollars by the time they retire. 
In other words, the amount of income that a person makes with a bachelor's compared to a person with a high school diploma only, it's more than a half a million dollars over the lifetime of that person. So basically, by getting a bachelor's degree, you're insuring yourself to have more than a half a million dollars more than people that only graduate high school. And I like that half a million dollars. So that's why I got myself a degree. The reason I keep telling you about community colleges is because it is the best bang for your buck in the entire nation. All right? There's some of the cheapest ways to get education out there. If you don't want to go to school because, again, school is not for you, then become an entrepreneur. Learn a business. Learn how to be a business person and succeed at being that business person. Because most business people may fail plenty of times before they succeed, but eventually they do, and they, you can make an entire life with a business. All right? So again, if school for whatever reason is not for you, then become an entrepreneur and pick up some skills that people are going to need to be looking for you in the future. Not only that, most business people solve plenty of problems for society. All right? Thank you for listening again to Professor Choi, and uh, thank you for tuning in. I hope you're following my financial advice for young adults. Have a good one.